Hey everyone and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party, causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host, Michael Montalvo, and for the next few minutes, we will swim through the river of time to find out what makes it a truly unique On this episode, we examine the events that occurred May 20th. I could talk about how on this day, 1927, Charles Lindbergh began his nonstop transatlantic flight. Or how on this day in 1932, Amelia Earhart began her trip to become the first woman to fly solo and nonstop across the Atlantic. When asked by an Irish farmhand if she had flown far, She replied, from America. But instead, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. We've talked about tornadoes before, with the first photo on August 28th, 1884. And today, we're going to talk about the northwestern town of Codell, Kansas. Quick side note, Kansas is apparently the fourth in the United States in tornado frequency per mile. Based on the format of this podcast and my introduction, you know that a tornado hit Codell on May 20th. But that's not the interesting part about all of this. The year was 1916. And 1917. And 1918. And on this day, May 20th, on the same day, three years in a row, the town of Codell, Kansas, was struck by a tornado. So let's start in 1916. On the night of Saturday, May 20th, 1916, at approximately 7 p.m., an F-2 tornado touched ground three miles south of Codell before traveling northeast for 15 miles. The first tornado glanced the town's west side and caused an estimated $12,000 in damage. In a report done by Neela Denton that described the damages sustained in the tornado, stables were badly damaged as were automobiles, Windmills and farms, including livestock and machinery, were destroyed, and barns were lifted from the foundation and twisted round. Willis H. Johnson, who had been outside tending to some chickens, threw himself down on the barn ground and was pinned there by the storm. Johnson's step-granddaughter, Mary Netherland, and her cousin Agnes ran downstairs and tried and failed to open the front door. If they had been able to, it is most likely that they would have been sucked out into the cyclone. Luckily, the town only suffered property damage, and no loss of life was reported. Before we go on to 1917, I think we should answer what does the F scale mean. I'm going to talk sciency for a moment. The F scale, or the Fujita scale, at its most basic description, is a rating of the tornado's intensity on a scale of 1 to 5 based on the damage it inflicts. This is determined by a ground and aerial survey. It also takes into account the wind speed of the storm ranging from less to 73 to 318 miles per hour. This method of measuring tornadoes was introduced in 1971. So how did they rate tornadoes before then? Well, they were just all retroactively rated. Based on the damage to the area, the Fujita scale, although based on wind speed, is, after all, a damage scale. The scale was decommissioned in 2007, however, and the enhanced Fujita scale, the EF scale, was introduced, which more accurately determined wind speed and improved the damage parameter descriptions. Okay, back to tornadoes. On May 20th, 1917, a Sunday evening around 6 p.m., an F3 tornado touched ground in the area. Again, the damage was done mostly to property similar to the one the year before, only this time it was on the town's eastern side. Nina Denton's article on the tornado states that ranches were some of the hardest hit. Large trees were blown down, causing $10,000 in damages, and at another, the Swenson Ranch, all of the main ranch buildings were destroyed, about as complete as could have been made. The home of Joe Lee was so destroyed that the people were not able to tell where the house had once stood and had their furniture thrown two miles away. 
the family, who was home at the time, managed to make it to their cement chicken house, which protected them from the wind. At the ranch of O.M. Loveland, the roof and top story were blown off and their large barn was destroyed. The Lovelands were not at the ranch during this, but three men they employed were, but they too managed to escape injury by taking shelter in the cellar. The May 1917 issue of the Plainville Times wrote about the two ranches saying that an 8-foot galvanized water tank was lifted and crushed, a wagon sideboard was torn in two, and the kitchen was lifted into the air, never to be seen again. Amazingly, once again, it was all property damage. So now we get to May 20th, 1918. Celesta Adams Glendening, a survivor of the three storms, wrote about the morning of that day. This was Cyclone Day, so-called because on the same date in the two previous years, 1916 and 1917, a tornado, or a cyclone as we called it then, had swept through our community and I am sure there was not a family in Codell and for miles around that had not remembered and wondered if it would live up to its name on this day. Well, it did. In less than 12 hours, another cyclone had struck and left death and destruction in its path, by far the worst cyclone of the three. It was after Glendening ate supper that she and her family noticed that the clouds had darkened and had begun to billow up high. Rain and hail began to fall, and the wind became so strong that they would not have made it into the shelter if they had tried. There was a terrible noise beside the rain, hail, lightning, and thunder. I'm sure we knew the roar we heard was a cyclone for sure. I must have prayed, don't we all when we get to the place where we can't help ourselves? Then we ask God to take care of us? Thunder roared, lightning flashed, rain and hell beat against the windows with such force, I knew they would break. Their house was being torn apart, and they could see the cracks form in front of their eyes. The space between the roof and the walls grew, and the lightning could be seen between them. The smell of wet plaster filled the air, and the sound of nails being pulled from wood, and then the wood breaking, was heard next to the rain. In the kitchen, dishes broke and the upstairs became covered in debris, all except the area that Celestia Adams Glendinning and her family stood. That night, they had four inches of rain, and then the storm that seemed to last for hours was over. The only thing that remained standing was the mailbox. Hundreds of horses and cattle were killed, and crops were damaged by wind and hail, Barns, houses, schools, and more were demolished and then had their debris swept away. Most of Codell was damaged or destroyed by the storm and most of it was never rebuilt. The remains of foundations still lying as a grim reminder of that night. The Topeka Daily Capital wrote, The little town of Codell in Rooks County is practically wiped out. This tornado was classified as an F-4 and touched ground on a Monday night near Hayes and made its way towards Codel. It traveled 35 miles and swept a strip a mile wide. When it finally made its way down the middle of town, 10 people were killed. Following the storm, the neighboring towns showed up and helped to clean up debris, which took days. And any night that a storm would come up, the town went into hiding. In fact, several new tornado shelters were built as a result. Today, Kodal is more of a village than a town. I tried to find some information on its population, but the site I looked at said that it hasn't been included in past census counts. On May 20th, 2018, 100 years after the last tornado, a ceremony was held in Kodal where they unveiled a new sculpture to commemorate the anniversary. And to end this episode, because of the three tornadoes, the town was mentioned in Ripley's Believe It or Not. I didn't have a better ending than that. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps me steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme and to thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Bow.